Emily's not wrong, this is horrendous. We are picking you up right where we left you last time. And if you remember, we said there was a storm and we was gonna bunker down and wait you out. That storm has got progressively worse. And now I'm bricking it because I need to drive sideways into the headwind to get out of it. So, but we can't stay here. No, it's too, the van is like that. The van is rocking and not in a good way. <laughs> this will be the worst bit. Weather forecast says 50 to 60 mile per hour winds with gusts of 70 to 80, worse on the coast. We are obviously on the coast and it's got, the weather forecast has got worse as the day's gone on. It's a lot worse than what they said it was gonna be. Oh, it's nasty. Oh, there goes my restaurant, I've been up. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like I'm cooking tonight. Yeah, we could have a nice stew or a roast. What do you reckon? That'd be a roast, a roast. roast. Right, this is where the wind's going to hit us, I'm just going to... Hold on tight, hold on tight, hold on tight! Oh my word! Okay. We've got no choice really but to head back inland. All the next set of park ups are also on the coast, so we're gonna have to head back inland, back the way we came. And if you've been following along, you'll know it's taken us an awful long time to get to the coast. So yeah, we'll go back inland, spend the night there. Luckily, nothing here is too far away, and then we'll come back to the coast, hopefully tomorrow when the storm's passed. I tried my absolute best to go and get some footage of how incredibly windy it was. But um, I couldn't even walk, like I've never, and I literally couldn't walk. No. I've never been in wind where I physically cannot move forward. It was absolutely horrendous. And I'll try and put the footage in now, but I know for a fact it's all over the place. And all my cameras are stabilised and none of them can handle it. The van, everything's moving in the van, wouldn't it? Yeah, me and AJ didn't go outside because we'd have just got washed away into the sea. Yeah, you couldn't walk the dog in it. You'd blow, well, especially you, you'd blow away. <laughs> been a costly move in our rush to get going what have we done we have left the step out nope. that could have been We've fatal that could it? we don't care about the second wind Very liable to flood something else risk. to take form I didn't know that you'd been here before No, we've never been here before I dare say you'll be back It's alright and you, you're sort of welcome down here any time you want to stop but just um, as I say with the high tides yeah. uh, usually it's the middle of the night Oh, no, and we I don't want that. One night, uh, <laughs> I came down one morning and there was a lady there and she was sat in a van and she was petrified. Oh. She was praying because she got up at two o'clock in the morning and went jump out and the water was up to the floor. Oh, crikey. Oh, no. <laughs> down south, yeah. Yeah, where? Kent. Oh, Kent, way down south. Yes, way down, yeah, way down, yeah. We seem to have found a cracking spot here still really windy as you can tell but we're not going to stay here because there is a sign that says that it's liable to flooding and we've actually had a local come and tell us that high tide is around like 4 30 and he's seen it like up to here and stuff so with the weather it's not a good idea so we're gonna keep moving on and hopefully you can hear me a bit windswept towing What's it like out there? It looks lovely. Lovely. Yeah, it's really nice. They do like a bumpy road here in Scotland, don't they? They like a pothole. They do like a pothole on this side of Scotland. Oh, another one.
We found a cracking little spot in some trees, so we've got plenty of shelter from the wind. The rain is on and off now, so it's not so bad, and the ground is solid, so we're not going to get muddy, well, not going to get as muddy feet as traipsing in crappy mud, which we're struggling with on this trip. Emily has just started dinner. We are having a roast, and don't worry, I'm not going to bore you with a load of roast footage again, but last time we had a roast, we got a lot of questions about Emily's roast potatoes. So here it is then, another episode of Cooking with Emily. So how do you do your spuds? So first of all, you want to peel and chop them quite large. You then want to put them on to part boil when you're ready in your roast process. While they're on part boiling, you want to preheat your oven, and I use butter. Definitely not the uh, the most heart friendly, but you can use oil or whatever, but I use butter. Get that in the oven, and then once they're part boiled, you wanna get your saucepan and your colander, drain them off, and literally whack them from one to the other to make them go all fluffy. And then once you've done that, you pop them onto your boiling hot, butter and you'll hear it all sizzle which is really nice then whack them in the oven with a lot of bit bit of salt on not too much bit of salt on and then halfway through give them a little like squish about and stuff moving about the tray and voila fluffy potatoes and i reckon we've got a new potato dance there so it goes swish 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 fluff 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 swish 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 fluff 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 there we go swish 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 fluff 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 there we go <laughs> <laughs> you got it the first two times What's also really, really, really exciting is I've bought Emily some new knives. I've wangled Emily some new knives. You may remember we had one crappy knife in here and now she's got some really fancy knives. They're made from Japanese steel using traditional techniques. I am really, really happy with these. They are individually inspected and come with a lifetime guarantee and they are super sharp, so be careful if you do get some. Also, they come in a really fancy heavy duty ash wood box, which means they're an excellent present, which they was meant to be for Emily for Christmas, but she's got her hands on them sooner. And they're not just any knives, they are used by Michelin star chef. So these are top quality Japanese steel knives. I have the three piece set. I have a slicing knife, a utility knife, and a vegetable knife. Because of the single beveled edge, the Kamikoto knives achieve an unbelievably sharp edge. Which means they are particularly good for like carving out pumpkins or any kind of silly activity like that you want to do. And pumpkins are tough. Oh, they even come with their own certificate of authenticity. So that's pretty special. So if you are getting them as a gift, it's a nice thing to have. We have got a discount code for you. So if you use the code VIBE50, on top of Kamikoto's special offers, you'll get an additional $50 off. So a huge saving. So just head to the link in the description to check that out. And then you could be chip, chip, chippity chopping like Emily around the kitchen. All over the place. Right, should we carry on with this dinner? Yes. How good does that look? But more exciting than that, for pudding, we've got one of my favourites. Now this, we call this poop in a pot, which is poop in a pot, because that's exactly what it looks like. But basically, it is Angel Delight poured over Swiss roll, and it is my absolute favourite, so very exciting. I don't know if you can hear, the wind is still blowing a gale outside, isn't it? It is indeed. And Emily's giving me that look as if to say, stop talking, I'm hungry. Too right, my dinner is there. So we're gonna have dinner, and then we'll see you tomorrow. And it's all right that we're having such a big, unhealthy meal, because we're gonna smash it out tomorrow and do loads of exploring, because fingers crossed, if the wind just stops, we can cope with the rain, but if the wind just stops, yeah, just the wind just dies down. We'll be okay. And we'll see you lot tomorrow. What a difference a day makes. We have made it to the coast. And look, look at this weather. Proper glorious sunshine. come from? No idea. Where do the white lines come from? We're gonna ask you instead. This is a very rugged pebble beach and a lot of them have got like the the white lines and stuff on them. But obviously they're grey stones and I'm 
I don't know, is it from like hitting each other or... I don't know, who knows? Why, why do they get white lines on them? I reckon it's layers, old layers in the rock. Do you think? I don't know if we've got any geologists that follow us, but if we have, let us know in the comments. Oh, I'm really interested, please let me know, I won't even Google. Behind me here is St Ninian's Cave and St Ninian was the earliest person to bring Christianity to Scotland and they believe that this was his home once but they cannot verify that but they do think that he used to come here to take breaks away from the monastery to get some calm and chill time by the sea listening to the waves and I'm going to show you inside it. Now, I'm not gonna lie, this kind of freaks me out a little bit, and it's not somewhere that I would want to live, that's for sure, even though it probably would make a good hobbit home. <laughs> and it's smaller than what I thought it was. It's literally just a tiny little cave, so I'd imagine it would have been good for a little retreat and a little breakaway, but yeah, probably definitely not somewhere you'd want to live. This is why it takes us so long to get anywhere. Look, Emily's up there getting all her bits for Instagram and TikTok. Poor old AJ, he's like, come on, I just want to explore the beach. We are having to be very careful now with our decisions as when and where to take AJ out. We're having to retrain our brain after having dogs for 12 years, I think, and being in that mindset, right, get up, take the dog for a long walk, get the energy out of him, take him for a long walk at lunchtime, another one at dinner time. We're now having to relearn but we can't do that anymore. So we are very conscious of his abilities and learning what exercise he can and now can't have. This bit of Scottish coastline is really pretty. It's about a mile's walk to get down here from the car park, isn't it? Yeah, and it's an easy walk as well. So it's just like a little bit through the woods and stuff. It's not really trekky or anything like that. So a nice, easy stroll. Nice, easy walk that brings you out onto the coast. And then you've got the green cliffs that hit the blue water. And it really is pretty. That's my favourite kind of coastline, I think, because you get the contrast of the green and the blue. Yeah. It looks a lot like Cornwall, although it is pebbly and not sandy. But yeah, really, really, really pretty. And now we're going to make our way. You'll notice we're probably going quite quick, and that is because we're limited on time. So we're going to head off to the next place. Just a quick note on the local people before we set off on our next destination. They are ridiculously friendly, aren't they? So friendly. Everybody just wants to stop and chat and give you some like handy tips and places to go. Really, really nice. Yes, yeah, so thank you to all the local Scottish people, either online or that we've met, that have given us tips. Now, obviously, because we've lost so much time, we're not going to be able to squeeze everything in. So we're just going to pick out the bits that we look like the look of the most. <laughs> so we're just going to head for them. So we've got about an hour's drive along the coast now. And then what is our next stop? And next stop is a fish pond. We're just driving through a place called Port William, and I've got to say, this Scottish coastline is pretty. Ah, you trying to concentrate on the road, the potholes, the, the view, and everything else. This bit of coastline is really, really pretty. Hopefully, we're managing to capture some of it, but the sun is very low in the sky, so it's tricky, isn't it? It is, yeah, it's really, really bright actually. It's so weird going from storms and blowing a gal and rain yesterday to glorious sunshine today. I just wanted to say about the towns, all the little towns that we've been to so far, they're really, really clean and well kept. It's, the people that live there must really take care of them. They're all like, uh, all the buildings are rendered, most mostly rendered, and like the, they're obviously regularly painted, it's all really neat, there's no rubbish whatsoever. I don't think I've seen hardly any, which no. is a massive plus. So yeah, really enjoy it. Now the sun's come out, really enjoying this little coastal <laughs> part of Scotland. <laughs> Thank you. 
We've just pulled up at the fish ponds and unfortunately they're closed from the 31st of October. So our, our researcher, because I know a lot of you think we've got a team that help us with this, our research assistant has um, made an error. It said it was open online, but clearly not. But it doesn't matter because what we did want to tell you, I'm going to get out of that sun. What we did want to tell you is there's lots and lots and lots and lots of really pretty little things that you can stop and see on the way. Now, obviously, we've skipped loads of them out because we thought it was coming to the fish ponds. <laughs> <laughs> but we did stop at one this morning before we got to um, the first beach, which was... Sobe Tower. And Sobe Tower is owned by the Hani, Hanai. There's, there's a few, actually, you're looking at me funny. There is a few different names of what these clan is called, but it's all Hani, Hanai, Hannah and stuff like that. They now own it and they're trying to restore it. So if you do visit there, they ask you to like leave some comments and stuff and share it about because it is a very, very nice historical landmark. So there you go then, Sobe Tower, and like I say, many, many things to stop on this route and see. They're only little like stop-offs, like mm -hmm. 10, 15 minutes, but you'll learn loads about the local history and whatnot. And also, apologies for the noise, that is our battery-to-battery -battery charger, plus the engine's running, but we don't have time to stop. Wait for that to turn off to do the filming, so you're just going to have to live with it. And now, should we find somewhere to spend the night? Yeah, let's do it since the fish pond isn't open. And I had some really good fun facts for the fish pond. Next time, next time we'll get the fish pond. just a boy. Natural habitat. Yeah, it's just a boy. Earlier on we saw a seal, um, but there was absolutely nowhere for us to pull over to film it, but it was just sitting on the beach, wasn't it? Really, really yeah, cool. just a big fat seal just sitting there. So I thought I had another one, but no, we've just got cows. Many, many cows. AJ's getting himself all excited. Mm -hmm. They're not yours, buddy. Ah, oh, look at the calf. They're utterly pointless to you, mate. <laughs> That's worse than my joke of the days. They're rather slow, aren't they? Yeah, well, we're in no rush, are we? <laughs> AJ's having a great time. I know, look at him. Oh, don't lick your lips. They're not for you. There's actually cows on the beach. Like, that's just, like, that's where they live. That's where they're eating cows on the beach. We love, we love. It was always on fire, our house, our dream. We were dancing on wire, red clay, it seemed. I never felt like this before. When I was trapped, you showed it. What's going on over here? What's this? <laughs> this, I'm doing a TikTok live whilst I'm cooking fajitas. So if you follow us on TikTok, which 61,000 of you don't, don't. <laughs> head over to TikTok and you can see some really, I was going to say interesting, but you can see some stuff on TikTok. You can see some, you can see some stuff live on TikTok. Like, so not even behind the scenes, like mm. on Instagram, like a day before or whatever. No. Nope. Live. Actual live. So I feel that these 90 people watching are enjoying it. They're getting a treat. They are, right? This park up Emily has found is an absolute, what's the word? Amazing. I was going for like a new um, adjective. Oh, and I don't even know what it's, it's stunning. There you That's go. That's not a new one. I feel that I have made, out, made up for earlier 
with the fish pond. Yeah, our research assistant, head of research, has definitely redeemed herself from her earlier faux pas, the fish pond. We won't speak of that again. We are professional travel vloggers, you know. We are. We are indeed. <laughs> really not. Anyway, the views here, it's getting dark now, but I've been out with the camera. The views are ridiculous. You can see all the way across the Irish Sea. You can see, can we see Ireland? Have we established if that's Ireland? I, I, I think it is, yeah. We think we can see Ireland, which is good, because we're coming there at some point, so that's very exciting. Uh, the sunset was amazing. It's a no-drone zone, I'm afraid, and I do try and stick to the rules in places like this, just so they don't get hacked off and mm -hmm. end up like banning vans, because a lot of vanners have drones. I have seen one drone up already tonight, but there you go. So I'm not going to fly mine, but I'm going to go out now, after we've had our tea, and I'm going to try and get some shots of the lighthouse at work, because you can see it out of our back window. The view is amazing. Oh, a working lighthouse. I don't know what it is. I've got a thing about lighthouses, you, you know. have a thing about lighthouses, Yeah. You? This might not be the only one on the trip. <laughs> so we're going to have some heaters, and then we'll show you guys around properly tomorrow. Then we were dancing on wire. Yeah, we were dancing on wire. Guess what, you got some facts? Yes. <laughs> if you're wondering why we've not got AJ, these are the reason. Oh, he'd love it in here, wouldn't he? Oh my God, this would be like a dream come true to him. And we wouldn't do it to him and we wouldn't do it to the sheep, so. Glorious. Now this one is having a pee. Oh, and another one. Yeah, one <laughs> I don't know what it is about your presence then, but you've set them off on a, <laughs> on a communal pee. <laughs> They're loving it, they? Oh yeah, and another one there. Yeah. And this one, look. That one's doing it. This one's doing it. Oh, this one's really little. That must have been the first time they'd got up and they are all having their morning wee. <laughs> yeah, we've disturbed them. We've got up early this morning to make the most of the kind of sunset that we're getting. This low cloud has kind of squashed it a little bit, but it doesn't matter because last night we had the most epic stars. We finally, finally had a clear night and we could see the dark skies and all the pretty stars. So that was pretty special, wasn't it? Yeah, it was so, I don't use the word again, stunning. But yeah, it was, and it was so dark and it was like crystal clear, all sparkling in the sky. And so far it's been my favorite thing. And we could see them out there skylight, which is why you love it, isn't it? Cause you can yeah. appreciate it from inside the van. Yeah, exactly. I don't even gotta get cold. I just turn off all the lights and just look up. And yeah, I love that skylight. <laughs> There's the van tucked up over there. This is the Mole of Galloway Lighthouse. We are standing on the most southerly, southerly point in Scotland. And from here on a clear day, you can see Northern Ireland, the Isle of Man and Cumbria. And this lighthouse is one of 200 along the Scottish coastline. And this one in particular has been saving lives at sea for over 200 years. That's some good fun facts, I'm telling you. Particularly good, because she's not had breakfast or a coffee yet, have you? Oh, I know, and the fog is there. I need it. I need breakfast and I need coffee. Today is very much a work day, so Emily and I are going to smash out a load of work this morning and then we'll get back on the road this afternoon. I don't start work until I've had my breakfast first, though. You sound like that deer from the other week with your jumping. <laughs> They're crunchies, Coco Shreddies.
transport you to a very windy Port Patrick, a really, really, really pretty harbour town on the coast here. And you can see why it's one of the most popular holiday villages on the whole of the southwest coast of Scotland. Yeah, pretty little buildings. It's got its own little bay, harbour area, lifeboat station, lighthouse. All the buildings are really like pretty and colourful, aren't they? Yeah, and the little beach area that I've got is really nice and dogs can go on it. And there's loads of restaurants as well. Not open now because it is out of holiday season, but in the height of it, they are all open. Yeah, and they do look really good as well. Really, really quirky little places. It's not very camper van friendly though, not so much as the rest of this route has been. There is quite a few signs there, no parking, but we're not gonna stop. We are gonna move on, but you just wanna go and look at a little statue monumenty thing down there, don't I you? I do, yes, I wanna show you it. This is the memorial place of the ferry vessel, the Victoria. Now, this ferry vessel used to take passengers, up to like 1,500 of them, and cars from Scotland over to Ireland. And one night when she went out on just a normal trip, unfortunately, the sea and the weather just turned on her and she entered into a storm. Now, the captain knew it was really bad and he tried to turn the ship around, but unfortunately, she got absolutely hammered as he was trying to turn the ship. Now, there was water gushing in everywhere. They had like people, lifeboats coming from Scotland and from Northern Ireland, but unfortunately, the ship did capsize. And out of the 1,500 people that were on that ship, only 44 of them survived. And I just wanted to come here because I don't know what it is about ships and seas, but it just, the sea is such an amazing place, but also a dangerous place. And I have an utmost respect for it. And I just, yeah, I just wanted to come and see it and thought it was quite good to share. And much like the weather turned on that ship, the weather is about to turn on us. A whole new weather front is coming in, and I think this time, today, tonight's gonna to be the worst, but then we've got three days of torrential rain and wind. So I think we're gonna head inland, which means we're gonna end this video here. So if you've enjoyed us showing you how not to van life in a storm, where not to park, <laughs> epic park ups when you can find them, how to cook banging roast potatoes, ah, all sorts. All sorts, and a little bit of tragedy along the way. <laughs> we always like a bit of tragedy on a van life video. And on that note, I'm gonna ask you very kindly to hit the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up and ding that bell. And we will see you all on the next one when I think we're heading to a lock.